Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of Newsmakers TV. I'm Jerry Roberts. It is Friday, March 1st, just four days to go, count them four before Election Day, which we don't really have anymore because everybody votes by mail, but nobody's voting anyway. But in any case, we have an all our all-star panel assembled to talk about that and all the other big stories in Santa Barbara this week. Lily Dallow, who is uh, from KEYT, Ryan P. Cruz of The Independent, and Josh Molina, man of many hats, and Newshawk. Lily, let's start with you, because uh, on election night, such as it is, everyone will be tuned in to KEYT, which... Uh, is the place to go for at least real time information um, on election night. And uh, as the uh, digital content director, what what are you doing? I mean, you're going to even be have more real time than the real time at KEYT. Well, how do you how does one prepare for an election these days? Yeah, well, so typically uh, I the. Last time we had elections, I spent like the few months leading up to it making a voter guide. This time around, weather kind of got in the way of that, but uh, I will be making one for the next one. But that usually entails like me reaching out to all of the candidates of each of the races we want to highlight and sending them like a whole survey with questions for them each to fill out the same thing and putting that on one page for everyone. But this year, I just kind of compiled like our election coverage so far. So I make a page for election coverage, which is our replacement of the voter guide. And then we have our normal politics page, local politics. And then there's gonna be a whole page dedicated to live election results. And so luckily that we just get a code and that'll just update all the results electronically. Like I don't have to manually be punching them in like they used to. Um, But so throughout the night, that page We'll just be updating with uh, vote counts. And then on our homepage, um, we're highlighting six races that will update like the um, election results just on regular KYT.com. And homepage. how many how many of those can you recall at the moment? Um, I can. Well, I know that we have like District 24, like Salute Garbal's race, um, uh, Greg Hart's race. Monique Lamont's race, um, and then two of the Santa Barbara County Supervisor races, and then one Slow County, uh, because we also cover Slow. And then um, for broadcast, we have about, I think, six reporters all going out to cover one or two races each, and a reporter will go out with a videographer. Um, So it's kind of all hands on deck. We were told like a month in advance that, you know, PTO won't be approved for this day. Uh, well, I'll be working night side, so I'll probably be working until like 1130 or midnight. Um, yeah, it's pretty hectic. It's, it gets the adrenaline pumping. We do election night pizza, so it's kind of fun. But um, yeah, it'll be busy for sure. Here's here's how many hands are on deck. They've even invited me into the studio to to, to talk about the election uh, on election night, uh, which is, I think, the first time since 2020 that uh, I haven't been doing it from my living room. Uh, they, they, they don't have to be remote anymore. So that's kind of a good thing. And so However, you I want right? you to speak sharply to the news director and make sure that he gets some decent pizza this time. Or even <laughs> those subs are good, too. Hey, Josh, nobody's voting, it appears about, at, at least to this point. Uh, I was looking this morning, it's like 12% in one district, uh, I think maybe a 13 in another. Uh, is it just because the races are so boring, or are you expecting a, a, a rush of ballots this weekend, or what? Well, I think, you know, generally people don't pay attention to all this stuff um, like we do. And they don't pay attention until the last minute. So the people who have voted are are probably the insiders, people who have made up their minds already. So I think we will get a big uh, rush, crush of voting at, over the weekend and uh, Monday and Tuesday. And so we'll see those numbers go up. But really, none of the races are that competitive. It isn't as though something is super electrifying uh, local voters so i think we'll have low turnout we'll have likely voters and i don't think we'll have any surprises largely because incumbents usually win and in low turnout races they definitely have even more of the advantage 
Yeah. And statewide, it's only, I think, 11 percent this morning, the last time I checked. So we're actually a couple percent ahead of that. Um, of course, we do have the big U.S. Senate uh, primary uh -huh. um, for the late Dianne Feinstein seat. And w something that was interesting to me is that Steve Garvey, one of Ryan's great heroes uh, <laughs> and, and the most hated man in the northern okay. part of the state, uh, uh, I like the Dodgers, but I'm not going to roll the Steve Garvey. He's, he's running as a Republican um, in the Senate race, and he is now leading that uh, Senate race, according to um, a UC poll that came out this morning by a point or two. And of course, Adam Schiff, who is uh, the congressman who's been leading all along, has been spending a bunch of money trying to bring Garvey along so he doesn't have to run against Katie Porter, the other Democrat. But I just wonder, Josh, whether that will help Frank Trice, your hero Frank Trice, in the third district, who is running with at least some Republican support, uh, and uh, and have a, a more heavily Republican uh, ballot. I what think Tommy Lasorda, the late great Tommy Lasorda, could be running, and it would not help Frank Trice <laughs> if those two were tied together somehow. Um, I think Frank Trice is a big mystery candidate will never really know what he intended to set out to do whether he actually thought he was going to win or he was just running as an experiment but from all accounts that i can you know it's we don't want to predict because we just look like idiots afterward but it looks like you know he's not gonna do well and it's a big colossal blunder on the part of the republicans he does have this ad he has it on Newshawk. i i I probably doesn't have it on the independent knowing him, um, but he should, but he's got a video ad and he's like, so people say I can't run a campaign. People say I can't raise money. Well, let's hear what they have to say. And then he goes to all these people who are like pointing out the things they want more of, but the things they want more of are bad things. So it's like supposed to be a, ironic or sarcastic. Like, Yes, yes. Simple ironic. messages work, not complicated. Like ironic it's like, man on doing? the street, but the first man <laughs> on the street happens to be his campaign manager, which is kind of tells you something. You couldn't find that that many uh, men on the street. Uh, Lily, what what supervisorial district do you live? Do you live in Doss Williams or Joan Hartman or Lois or Lois Cap, Laura Cap? Or <laughs> do do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Are, did you vote yet? No, I actually have my review. I live right on the border of uh, <laughs> District Two and Doss's district. So you you're on the you're on the border. I'm in, I'm in Laura's district by a hair. <laughs> oh, okay. So you 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 can't. I have no. You say. Can still walk across the street and talk to your neighbors. So I've seen, right I've seen a lot of signs for Roy and Doss on the, right across the street. Yeah, there's a lot of signs for Roy. Unfortunately, I think a lot of them are by the roadside. Lily, you you know this that. The, the the only lawn signs, so-called lawn signs that count are the ones that are inside the house that people are actually <laughs> committed. The rest of them, people just kind of, yeah. I mean, once in a while they're in those. You know what? We haven't had the someone is stealing my lawn sign story yet. I'm this. sure we will. Huh? Have <laughs> I'm you, sure you we haven't will. gotten There's any calls, Ryan, about that <laughs> not one? Not yet, not yet. Oh, man, that's a... All right, uh, let's uh, just... Uh, go around here for a second uh josh what do you think in the first district das roy if das wins what's the margin <laughs> uh well das das is gonna win um you know i think that as much as insiders have complaints about das elections are really about people voting at the last minute and they vote based off of the people who've knocked on their door or get a mailer uh, from and uh, name recognition. And most people just aren't into who the people really are. They're just sort of looking at the Democratic uh, pamphlet. So, um, you know, he's going to win. And, you know, Roy, Roy's come a long way, but a lot of lessons to be learned uh you you know i've said this analogy before i don't mean to like promote violence this is an analogy but when you're trying to knock out an incumbent you have to knock them out you cannot expect to just sort of get lucky and win because that never happens in any sports you know uh, 
your team, the 49ers, Jerry, you know, they thought they would get lucky and win. And, you know, they left the money on the table there and Patrick Mahomes took it all. And so you've got to be 100% aggressive and never, ever count on what the insiders say, because the insiders just aren't enough to sway anything. So um, I think obviously Doc's going to win 55, 45, something like that. 54, think... 46. Uh, who knows? Um, mm hmm. Well, here's what I, I mean, I hear that the, what, they're trying to run the margin up because they're so worried that he's been damaged goods, that he is damaged goods. I mean, let's be blunt. Um, so when he runs in four years for the state legislature again, uh, he'll have a chance. I think if he does not get 60 percent, that's a weak showing for him. So that's I'm setting my expectations at 60 percent. You're over under. <laughs> That's my own. speaking of the over under and the Super Bowl. I digress for a moment. The over under on the Super Bowl was 46 and a half points. Of course, I had a Super Bowl party. And when Mahomes got that last touchdown pass, the, the final score went to 47. So I actually won money on the over under because I bet the over, even though uh, uh, the 49ers uh, lost the Super Bowl. But I felt so guilty that I sent it to my grandson at college. So um, be, be that to me. Jerry, 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 I'm aligned with you 100% in everything, but I'm never, ever going to be sad when the 49ers lose, yeah, especially yeah. in the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Uh, enough sports talk. Hey, Lily, I got to tell you, um, you know, from reading your uh, and and watching your, your flag football uh, coverage, I have two of my grandchildren are now playing flag football. And no, Felix, right. the six-year-old, yeah, is supposed to have his first game tonight, but I, do they have do they do they have weather do they have rainouts of flag football they don't have a regular football but do they have flag football do you know do they rain out flag football yeah in other words it's raining so are they going to call the game off tonight or am i going to get to go at dp you know i'm not totally sure i would assume that they would continue to play yeah, yeah you gotta play in the elements you gotta yeah. play in the elements even if it's flag huh yeah Marla. i think so all right, I'll be there. Pretty be sure there. they cancel if there's rain because there's sometimes lightning and these, you know, it's youth sports, but who knows? Ted is pretty hardcore, so maybe he'll <laughs> force them to play out there. All right. Well, speaking of violent contact sports, Ryan, the Planning <laughs> Commission yesterday, you see what I did there? Uh, the, the Planning Commission yesterday finally had a, a vote on this uh Long delayed 250 room uh, new hotel on Garden Street. Um, and uh, it seemed like it was a real uh, epic uh, battle. What the, what happened finally? I mean, this this has been a, a long time coming. You know, this dates back. That property has had uh, a specific plan to, to do this dating to 1983. So in some form, this has been, you know, uh, one of those things where the city made a deal a while back and now it has to pay up. It's side of the bargain. That side is a 250 room hotel, which is, you know, the Marmontes right there. That's, I think, 206 rooms. Uh, the Red Lion, or now it's the, the Hilton, I think, that's 360 rooms. And those are within like a mile and a half of each other. So the big thing was, uh, you know, a lot of public pushback, a lot of people angry about the housing aspect and the housing impact. And the, the, Developer, uh, Sean Gilbert, you know, he stood firm for the past three uh, hearings. They haven't adjusted much. They added six units. And since then, you know, they said the, the planning commission asked, can you prove how you got to six units? They had a, what I like to call developer math where they got, you know, we have 60 new people of, of that. Uh, one of them would 1% would be too young to have a house. So take them out of the picture. Out of that, 1.6 could be in, could share uh, per per unit, which doesn't make sense because they're studio units. And then, so that got them down to the number of, I think, 36. And then they assumed, you know, 70% of people in Santa Barbara commute. So we're only going to count for 30% of that, which got them down to the number of 11. And even then they offered six units and their math came out to 11. And, and this, this developer, Sean Gilbert said, you know, we're not, we're keeping it at six. That's 50%. And since we don't have a, what's called a commercial linkage fee, which would be, would be a kind of an in lieu fee. Uh, we don't have something like that for a hotel. It would be 20 to 50%. So they said, you know, we're, we're giving you six units. That's all we're giving you. And after a lot of debate, you know, uh, 
Commissioner Devin Wardlow has been very vocal about it, and so has Chair uh, Balki. And they they finally agreed that the the developer would give five hundred thousand to the uh, housing trust fund. And you know it it's that can do something because with the housing authority, they are able to leverage that you know up to six to ten times, up to as much as five million. Yeah. Uh, Lily, I know you agree with me that you're glad there's not a quiz on uh, Ryan's uh, uh, <laughs> recitation of that uh, calculus on the. I had to go back to my math tutor days to to figure wow. out how developers got from uh, six units for 60 new employees and you know 250 hotels. That 250 hotel rooms is is a lot, and one of the big things is having an underground parking right there in the the funk zone. Um, and this project getting a CEQA exemption and, you know, the, the city staff explanation to that was where we have an exemption that applies. We try to streamline the project as much as possible, but there was a lot of talk about that. Um, and this this project will most likely and almost most definitely get appealed in the next 10 days. Yeah. Hey, Josh, it sounded from your story like it was quite a lively meeting, four hours long, among other things. Uh, what did you find most annoying, uh, Brian Barnwell's uh, filibustering or Devin Wardlaw's uh, demagogy? <laughs> First of all, I love covering meetings. It's like like you know going to see my favorite movie premiering at the you know Arlington or something. It's it's so fun. I yeah, love back and forths were were pretty exciting. You know because there's all these characters in the room, and Devin Wardlow is definitely a a rising political star. Uh, she is unabashedly pro-housing in the most fierce, <laughs> aggressive ways you can imagine. And she was sort of bringing out kind of the worst in this developer because Sean Gilbert, over and over, he's not intimidated. And so you have two people not intimidated by each other going at it and sean gilbert says look this is not a housing project this is a hotel you know we'll, we'll sure for we'll which give you we half had the rights for what uh 30 83 years. yeah you know it's like we'll give you half a million dollars but we want assurance that this is going to get approved today so he's like negotiating business style and uh Devin warlow is over there saying why couldn't you have come to this in the first place with this solution? And now we have to haggle over it here in a public meeting. So we have very intense, aggressive personalities. And, and Warlow is the star of that commission. I mean, she is very much. Yeah, she wants to run for office, doesn't she? Yeah, I mean, she I definitely she has her eyes. Podcast. She said, that she on, said on my podcast um, about a year ago uh, that maybe a little more than that, that you know, she does want to run for something. And I think she had said city council at some point. And I know she used to live in Jordan's district, but I don't think she lives there anymore. So I don't know exactly which one, but um, she's very in tune and tight with the Democratic Party. And she's definitely somebody who. Oh, good. Is, That's what we need. <laughs> um, she's she's very much there's a plan for her. And so, uh, yeah. And then Barnwell, Barn, you know, so Barnwell. Full circle used to be on the commission, then was on the council, then was gone, and now came back. And I just he called he the fell off a ladder in there somewhere too. And, 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 fell off a ladder, was bit by a dog, the whole thing. He called, the, he called the Hilton the Red Lion Inn. And like Ryan and a Lily, like I don't even know, Lily, was it the Red Lion when you were like like it was not it's been the Red Lion in like 30 years. Like, do you remember it being the Red Lion, Ryan? Like a long, you're too young even. Like, I know it because I, I I read it when I was doing some research. <laughs> right. So it's just so funny. Like, he's like, it's, well, I guess they call it the Red Lion. It's like, well, yeah, for 30 years, they haven't called it the Red Lion. He referenced the Potter Hotel. But <laughs> what I, what I really. probably stayed at the Potter Hotel. <laughs> what I really like, though, about Ryan is that he does have that historical knowledge. Like, he can actually reference these things. And um, other people, you know, they're so new to the conversation. Um, they're not. Of course, Sheila Lodge is on there, too. But so, yeah, he, you know, he's really great. These these meetings are so amazing and lots of public. Oh, the other lost thing, too. And Ryan can add on to this because he's probably a better source than I am with this is these arts people in the funk zone um, were really upset. They're like opposed to 
the funk zone being taken over by this big hotel. So as part of the negotiation, Sean Gilbert says, yeah, we'll make sure the lobby has local artists work display. <laughs> It's <laughs> just like, yeah, that was like one negotiation and, and the funk zone people are in the room rolling their eyes saying, oh yeah, that'll keep the funk in the funk zone, you know, run our art in this, this yeah, hotel. Not, not to mention but... that, that the restaurant will not be open to the public. And the reason behind that, uh, the developer explained is if they did, they would have to uh, have additional parking in the project and they don't want to add additional parking, take up space. So we're closed off to the public, me and you, and we can't go have a bite to eat there unless we, uh, you know, we pay to have a room in these low cost hotel rooms that we're going to see at a I see a protest Airbnb. Ryan let's go and let's demand that they yeah. serve us and if they don't we're, we're going to have a we're going to we're going to have a press table all four of us <laughs> we're going to demand it to go to the restaurant opening uh to see what to see what it's actually like hey Lily I meant to ask you when we were talking about the election what's uh what what has gotten a lot of traffic this week in terms of your social media? What stories? Anything? Um, honestly, I was kind of shocked that like there hasn't been much social media traction about this election, like at all. Like I think that that played a huge role into um, you know, just kind of my own lack of preparing. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll say that also. You know, I keep track on social media. And I like try to ask people if they know about the election, you know, people that aren't tied into, you know, what we're li listening to and paying attention to. And not a lot of people, especially like that, that 20 to thirties range. I don't see a lot of voters. Are, are you asking out. that on TikTok, Ryan? Uh, TikTok, Instagram, just kind of seeing how, how it's please, please happening. Please tell me that you're not doing the dance, or any of the dance. Uh, no, please, only, no. that's my secret. That's my secret TikTok. <laughs> Your secret. Hi, uh, Lily. What about Josh? Had a piece about the uh, second anniversary of the uh, invasion of Ukraine, and there was a, some uh, upset about that. And, and any, did you see any traffic on that? Or yeah. is terrible anti-Semitism a di di display out at UCSB? Did either one of those get any uh, uh, views? Um, I've been seeing some uh, about Ukraine, like one of our reporters did a story kind of talking about, you know, what's going on in Ukraine and sort of like relating it or not relating, but kind of putting side by side Ukraine and what's going on in Gaza. Um, I've seen that quite a bit on social media, um, especially the debate of like, you know, with one, you know, with what's going on in Gaza, have we kind of lost track of what's going on in Ukraine? and those sort of um, ideas floating around. Yeah, but no, nothing about these vicious anti-Semitic attacks uh, uh, by the um, Hamas on, caucus out at UCSB? On social media, not that I've seen so far, no. Okay, all right. Hey, uh, elsewhere, fellas, uh, State Street is back in the news where the city <laughs> council has now is now well, what are we on? Right, this is this is plan thirty one Z. We're we're on to. On it's the, been a, it's been a pilot program since you know twenty nineteen at this point. Um, yeah, but I mean, didn't I thought we I thought that they just approved this. Plan. So so what's going what's going on right now is you know the city's working on the permanent master plan, which you know that's a long, uh, big picture thing. And in the meantime, we're having these monthly interim uh, updates. And at those monthly meetings, the city council can choose to make changes. And the last time we had one uh, in December, they expressed, you know, we want to open up uh, Victoria. And then I think there was a mention that, you know, maybe Arlington, we addressed that too. And uh, the city administrator, because of the way that the, the ordinance is written right now, and, and this it's a temporary situation, they gave the city administrator the power to kind of just make a overnight uh, memo decision if the, if need be. And that was to for flexibility's sake, it, but it ended up kind of bringing this uh, plan that wasn't really thought out. It was kind of a, you know, half-baked, uh, we should have angled parking, uh, two separated bike lanes, and it wasn't really thought out or, you know, traffic engineer. I mean, it was, it was you know, of course, city administrator's office, tra traffic engineer, city engineer, Fire marshal all had a say in it, but there was no, you know, public. Here's a plan. Let's talk about it. Let's have city council talk about it. So I think city council, you know, that confused them that, you know, we don't have the say in this. So 
they gave direction that you know city administrator's office come back with another option but um, the city administrator doesn't actually have to do that right i mean the city administrator the city that that was a, an interesting part of that hearing too uh, city staff you know was really clear that you know city council you can say you can give an opinion but this is really the city administrator's job and responsibility and it's it's her purview um and this is something that you know the former city administrator and this is kind of a what makes it a little bit more difficult for former city administrator signed the memo the current interim administrator kind of helped it along and we, of course we have a new city administrator that was just announced that's going to be coming in may uh, who knows if this will be approved before then so i think we're going to see you know a, a few more options about what's going to happen on that 1300 block right by arlington all right. Hey, Lily, I know you got to go join up with uh, John Paul and Terry to go cover the rain. Um, so you can, well, actually, KYT has today's weather at least on the air. <laughs> you don't have yesterday's weather. Uh, what do you, what else are you working on before you go? Um, mostly uh, election coverage and rain for KYT. Um, and then I hear you're working on a big piece for the RIV. Is that true? Uh, for the RIV, I did. I was more of a smaller piece about the um, Coral Casino renovations, finishing up and talking to that architect. Um, and that is currently being printed. And right now, I'm working on a piece for the journal about uh, this lovely bronze artist uh, named Susie Cronin. And she lives in a very historical George Washington Smith architect home. Um, so yeah, it's been interesting. I'm doing, you know, just kind of a profile piece, totally different style of writing compared to news, but um, I'm really excited to work on it and kind right. of- Well, you know that we here, you know, support all young journalists and it's not an easy time to be a journalist and you're you're having to do this, this you know, multi-dimensional freelance 12 balls in the air. So you're doing the Lord's work. So we're, we're, we're all behind you on it. So go cover the rain if you need to. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye guys. Bye-bye. So, Josh, uh, can I add on to this? The, yeah, the, I just wanted to go back to the State Street thing for a second. Um, because we we have Megan Harmon, your hero, Megan Harmon, uh, saying that uh, she likes elegant solutions uh, to uh, things. And this was too complicated. Of course, Megan's graduate degree in traffic engineering and urban policy, not to mention the uh, needs of gerontology people and going to arts events. Uh, what was that? Was that just because she getting a lot of money from the from the restaurant people that didn't want to take away their uh, their parklets? You know, Jerry, I'm going to get to that point in just a minute. But first, what I want to talk about is this. Josh, I've taught you too well. <laughs> um Mike Jordan was the chair of the meeting. Randy Rouse was in Washington, D.C. on the, the Santa Barbara County Association of Governments lobbying trip. And um, so Randy was gone. So Mike Jordan was the chairing the his meeting. His head would have exploded. Um, there was this exchange between him and city attorney Teva Ostringer, which was just to me outrageous. I have no idea. Maybe Teva and Mike are good talking to each other this way, but as an observer, she's trying to explain to him what Ryan just explained, how you council passed an ordinance that gave the authority to the city administrator to basically make operational changes um, for safety, right? So it's not a political matter. You can do this. And Mike's like, why can't we direct the city administrator not to do this? And Taba is saying, you can't because you passed an ordinance giving her the power. But what you can do is revisit the ordinance and you can change the ordinance and then you could do what you want. But you can't do that today because that's not on the agenda. And Mike like stops her in the middle of her sentence and just says, so what you're saying is the answer to my question is yes. Right. And it's just like, these people get so comfortable in these positions, some of them, Mike included, that they forget they're doing the people's work. This is not a, a, a closed door behind the room sort of conversation between you and a peer where you're hashing things out. Like the public is watching and we want to hear what she has to say. We don't want to hear Mike interrupt and we don't want to see like sort of Mike's patriarchal I'm in charge thing. So I think a lot of people were missing Randy Rouse and uh, he can't come back 
too soon. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. picked up on that communication at all, Ryan, but that was definitely a, a strange moment in the meeting. The so shortest book in history, Mike Jordan's guide, a complete guide to etiquette. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> So anyway, back back to State Street. So, so there aren't going to be any changes on the thirteen hundred block, or there are. So I'm they're going to reopen the uh, the zero zero West Victoria, which will be right there by the public market, um, and that's kind of to allow emergency vehicles access that haven't really they don't really fit down there, fire trucks and and things like that. Um, the the plan for in front of the Arlington that's going to stay what it is right now until they figure out a, another option. You know, they might do. Parallel parking, which will have give them 23 spaces, which a little bit less than uh, a little bit fewer than the 29 that I think would be angled spaces. Um, and what about old people who want to go to the theater? They're, they're no, you can't you can't drop them off. Yeah. Them. And that, that was another interesting aspect of, about, um, you know, I'll say about the drop off on the Granada, um, something that came I out. I say in that old meeting. people as one myself. <laughs> um, that drop off that they've. they've instituted at the Granada it hasn't been working out as much as they planned you know they showed a picture of, of a show night at Granada and, and there's buses and vans parked in the bike lane across the street you know in the blocked off street kind of sitting there waiting for a show I think it was a, a they had there was an encore so a show went longer but that that was blocking the right away and that's you know they're going to need to handle that and figure out you know, because if they just do the same thing on Arlington and that happens, that's not safe either for those emergency vehicles. So maybe so maybe Megan and Kristen Snedden, who also didn't like this, can, you know, just walk behind the old people in their canes and push them down in the street while they're. Yeah. There. And and the, the other idea for the micro transit, which would help for accessibility, you know, for, for older people or people that are disabled, that is something that, you know, in real real world. It's not going to not going to happen. We don't have the five hundred thousand dollars to put towards that. Uh, Eric Friedman kind of pointed that out. Maybe you know, they can get the five hundred that 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 uh, Devin Wardlaw uh, extorted out of uh, the, <laughs> the, the poor old hotel. Right. Well, Jerry, let me go back to your initial question. You're asking, a, you're trying to pin Megan Harmon on this issue. But the, the thing that is real that Snedden and Harmon and all the council who voted against not changing is, is, is real and as a factor is Opal and the, uh, the outdoor dining parklet. Right. Um, there, the, the, that's a very, uh, I don't want to say powerful restaurant, but the ownership has a lot of connections at city yes. hall. And so that was How also many of the factor. council members you think get a free table there. <laughs> that was also a factor because the city administrator's recommendation was to remove those outdoor dining areas and so i think that's what kind of set off some of the opposition because it is a little weird normally you have council members who are very deferential to the experts the staff and say yeah. this is a, a safety issue we don't know safety you guys are engineers you know safety so we defer to you but in this case it was like we know safety but i mean i know you know safety but it doesn't seem that safe to us and so that is the unsaid thing that was going on here, too, was not wanting to affect those Carlitos and particularly Opal in that area. Yeah, I mean, it's much more Opal than Carlitos, isn't it? I don't yeah. I guess Carlitos has some, but they've always had outdoor dining over there. All right. Um, Josh, I thought you were the uh, you were the man on the Harbor Commission, but uh, uh, huh. Ryan, Ryan stomped you on the uh, cruise ship story this week. Right. I mean. Are we reducing cruises or not reducing cruise? What, what's happening with cruises? So we're going towards uh, a limit to of, you know, a effective limit. I'll call it an effective limit of 18 with a hard cap of it looks like either 20 or 22. And that's going to be for the city council to decide. And that's based on, you know, the average per year. So in the past 10 years, not including the pandemic, where we had two years that we only had five uh, calls, it was averages 18 per year before that. And of course, 2023, we had 30. Um, and that, you know, I think a lot of people were just, that's not sustainable. We don't want 30 cruise ships coming per year. But the problem with limiting them to, by the number, um, according to, to Mike Wiltshire, is that, you know, we don't charge them by uh, X, X number for the ship. We charge them by passenger. So 18, 18 calls could be anywhere from, you know, depending each. Oh yeah, ship, you get one of those giant fifty ones. to yeah. three thousand. Um, and if we get what eighteen of those three thousand passenger ships, that's a lot more revenue. 
And if you have 18 of those 200 passenger ship, that's, you know, a lot less revenue to deal with. So I think they're going to have a lot of discussion about that, but you know, some people want no cruise ships at all. Um, I think the medium is going to be that 18 number, which seems kind of sustainable and whether or not they do a hard cap or, you know, Mike Wiltshire says they average four cancellations a year. So they might account for that. And, you know, I should know this, but I don't. Does that is that money all go to the to the uh, the harbor commission? I'm or does that go to the general fund or where? Who, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Do you know, Josh, for sure? The the money that the ships pay to yes. the city to come, yes, probably goes to the the waterfront. Yeah, fund. because that's it's an a enterprise fund, enterprise department. Yeah. And yeah. obviously the sales tax from spending would go to the general fund, right. but I would imagine it's, it goes to, goes to them. No, I don't, I don't do Harbor commission stories unless one of my sources who, you know, very well, Jerry tips me off. And I didn't get that one. This time. She mums the word. She must be mad at you about something. Um, Why would um, anyone ever be mad at me? Hey, everybody should read Josh's biz, biz hawk column today because it's the most depressing thing I, I've read the, you know, in a while. So not only is there no commercial real estate sales or leases, uh, but uh, hotel taxes are down as well. Uh, so what's going on, Josh? Is it because the city council's uh, promenade policy is working so well, do we think? Well, uh, what I hear from the commercial real estate people is the uncertainty around State Street makes anyone really shy about investing. And so people aren't really trading these buildings because they don't know if what it's going to look like. And there is a large contingent of people who are not alternative transportation activists who want cars back on State Street because they think that increases visibility to their shops and to what their stores. What a, what a, what a wrong-headed view there, yeah. <laughs> and so the only real things that are really kind of successful on State Street are the restaurants, but a lot of those other retail places are very much struggling. So I think the thinking is that, because think about this, we have the master plan effort, we have the interim operational things that the council is working on it's changing week to week yes right and we have uh the seabed which is the downtown organization and the property owners trying to uh assess themselves so they can have more security and more clean cleaning on state street and a couple other things and there's just all of these things happening and well so and the paseo and and that well, what's happening with that big Paseo uh, uh, project? That well, next week right they'll now. be, uh, you know, talking about a project agreement that'll kind of set in oh, yeah? set the uh, the parameters, you know, for how how many units, um, how high it can be, up to two to seven stories. They're going to be talking about that next Tuesday. Oh, so is that, that is that a done deal or? No. Well, what it is is uh, for Alliance Bernstein and Georgetown, the developer, for them to want to really dive into this with all this uncertainty, they need some um, formal approval from commitment, right, from the city to say, yeah, let's go down this road. And that's what this project agreement is. And once the council approves this, then, yeah, we're going to see things moving a little bit quicker. It's long ways and going to be controversial, but the project agreement is the first, it's like a the you know <laughs> the consummation of the first day yeah and you know, and like, and you gotta kind of put this in the context of you know this this hotel on the on the yes, side, exactly they had the project agreement and if the city were to kind of balk on that agreement that doesn't look good to these new developers in paseo nuevo if the city were to you know sign an agreement and then take it back later so that context you know is kind of informing the city's thinking of we can't really deny this hotel because we said we were going to allow it and we're going to yeah, tell you know, people they're going to build up sale. So just to back up to that hotel thing again, that was the thing I really didn't understand that Barnwell was ranting about was like, Oh, that was old. We don't have to do that now. Cause it was old. Right. What, what was that about? Really? I mean, there's a lot of changes. There's, there's, you know, a lot of different environmental factors. And of course the housing crisis is a lot different, but when you make an agreement, um, that has terms, especially when, you know, somebody gives up some land um, for the good of the city. You know, we we're able to build the funk zone because of that. You know, and the city doesn't hold up its end of the bargain. That looks bad. Um, well, so kind of put them in a bad place to they're in a, they had a tough choice to make. And any other hotel problem, 
I don't. I wouldn't say probably get denied, but it would be a lot harder to accept. All right. So he was, was Cornwall was responding to Leslie Wiscombe, who said we have an ethical responsibility to honor this specific plan. Well, and that's what Cornwall was saying was like, I don't think we have an ethical, but he did kind of get tongue twisted a little bit because he ended up saying, you know, they have a deal and we need to stick with it. I think what he was saying is, yes, it we did that, but if we really need to open this up, we should do it for what's right for the community. But he erred on the side of it doesn't matter because any housing there anyway is going to be so market rate that yeah. that's not the housing we want. So he it, I mean, it's, it's part of the big, the bigger issue in, in housing and hotels in the city. We've seen you know, the press room is going to be gone and the hotel is going to be there and have another hotel over here. We've got countless hotels in the pipeline and, you know, that that's going to be changing the city in the next decade or so. Yeah. All right. We got to get out. Uh, Josh, real quick. Uh, Joan Hartman wins outright on Tuesday or not? Um, I would say probably outright. And I think Janelle will probably be second. Um, Janelle Osborne. And maybe Frank will surprise Ooh, us. Frank's not going to like that. You're going to hear You're going to get a sharply worded email. Frank's cut me off. Oh so, yeah. You know, you can always tell who I have access to depending on what I say here. No. Um no, uh Fra I haven't heard from Frank in a few days. I think he got upset cuz I sent him an email asking him about a logo that he has that's very similar <laughs> to someone else's logo. Very and, similar. And I, almost you, identical. I don't know if you heard back, Ryan, but I didn't hear from him. He had no Yeah, so, it's very similar to an Australian uh, nonprofit. Uh he didn't respond, huh? He probably went on Fiverr and like asked someone to do him a logo, and you it's know they did that. The same, and... just just kind of mirrored. Oh, yeah. All so right, well, I don't know. Probably Joan wins outright. If not, you know, then we'll see Janelle go in there. And uh, I think what's interesting, just to wrap up on that, is you know people are trying to hurt Doss for the next thing he runs for because they've sort of resigned that Roy doesn't have enough there to to convince enough people to vote for him. So. Um, I think the thinking is, will this stop DOS from winning state Senate or Congress? However, those dominoes. Well, it's nice that he controls the Democratic Party so he can determine that. I mean, he's the closest thing to a political boss we have. It's but I can tell you, Jerry, that is true. But the part Monique Lamone would would thrash DOS in a bigger race. She oh, yeah. is so popular she's bigger than the party but is she she gets three terms right so why is he even talking about running it well i think the plan is at some point salu's going to retire and monique will go to congress and that senate seat will be open so it could be Doss's if no one runs against him but if laura decides to get involved in any of this that's going to affect it and then with if Doss is damaged at all uh, perception wise is there going to be somebody else who comes forward a Megan Harmon or somebody with some kind of a name who wants to just sort of challenge and run. Anybody for told people. Salute that he's going to retire? I don't know. I haven't heard that from, from Salute. <laughs> no, I haven't I'll heard that. You, I'll let you break that to him. All right, Ryan Cruz, Josh Molina, and Lily Dallow, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to speak with us today. And thanks everyone for um, watching Newsmakers and we will see you next time. And I'm my our our uh, loyal viewer Sheila Lodge, former Mayor Lodge, says I'm not supposed to say. Don't forget to vote because it's a negative message. So remember to vote. Uh, it's uh, on Tuesday. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye.